This CEG is a 43-year-old woman with a history of a left temporal grade 2 glioma, status post-resection, about five years ago, and she has had seizures ever since. Now, again, I just like to orient myself and look at the montage before I start. So left and right parasitical, left and right temporal, and here's our midline. And the first thing we want to assess is the posterior dominant rhythm. And if we go ahead and count the frequency here, we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about 10 hertz. And that's the frequency. The amplitudes here, if we look and measure, we see one of the tallest waves here. It looks like it's about 35-ish microvolts and the smaller ones are probably around 10, so around 10 to 40 microvolts. Let's look at the symmetry now between the sides. Now in the parasagittal region, it looks pretty symmetric, so we see similar frequencies and similar amplitudes. Now if we go ahead and look down here at the temporal regions, the posterior dominant rhythm looks in terms of frequency, I mean sometimes it looks about the same, but then we see an asymmetry as we look uh, more toward the mid-temporal, anterior temporal, and frontal regions. And what we see is some higher amplitudes here and also just more slow waves. So this will become more apparent as we, as we move forward through the study. So let's look at the other aspects of the background. We can talk about that more as we go on. So the um, organization here, it looks well organized. We see a nice frequency amplitude gradient from the front to the back. And we see good reactivity here with the eye opening and the attenuation of the background. There is an asymmetry even here with higher amplitudes um, seen over the left temporal region. And also we just see more, maybe just a little more regular spiky activity, though we are seeing some spiky activity here. So this, it looks like a breach rhythm here, higher amplitudes in this region, which makes sense since the patient does have a known skull defect in that region. But besides the breach, we're seeing something else. We're seeing slow waves in this area in the left temporal region, and these are delta waves. Delta waves are 0 0.5 to 4 hertz. And so if we had four, if we um, just had these in one second, there would probably be about three of them. So that's about three hertz delta activity. It's never normal to see delta activity in an awake patient. It's always pathological. And delta is obviously slower than um, normal awake brain activity. And we're seeing those slow waves. If you compare this chain, it should be symmetric to this chain, and we're not seeing that delta activity here. So this is clearly an asymmetric finding, and we're seeing that um, pretty persistently. Now, when you see an abnormality like this, an asymmetry, it's always important to note if it is a persistent abnormality or just a one-time thing. If you just see it once, you can discount it. It's probably, you know, it might be just artifact or a glitch. Um, it's always important to not overread. You want to make sure that what you're seeing is persistent and consistent and consistent. So here's more slow waves here. Again, if we compare this chain to this chain, they should be symmetric and we're not seeing that delta activity that we're seeing here. When I see slowing, I like to um, kind of think about a few things. And it's very important to be systematic when you're analyzing EEGs. Otherwise, you can get lost. So when I see slowing, I ask myself a few questions. One, is it diffuse or focal? In this case, it's, clear, it's clearly focal. And where is it? We're seeing it in the left temporal region, mostly in the um, mid temporal region, but perhaps some more anteriorly as well. We're seeing some slow waves. So it's sort of left frontotemporal. So that's focal left frontotemporal slowing. You also want to mention the frequency of the slowing, which we already described, it's delta activity. And is it rhythmic or arrhythmic? Rhythmical slowing clearly is how it sounds. It's, it looks rhythmical. And arrhythmical slowing or polymorphic slowing, each wave looks a little bit different. And that's what this is. It's arrhythmic slowing. We're not just seeing a lot of waves that look exactly the same. 
The other thing you want to mention is, is it intermittent or is it continuous? This is intermittent. We do have some pages where we're not seeing any delta activity. So I would describe this slowing as focal, intermittent, arrhythmic, delta slowing in the left anterior quadrant. And if you say that, you're perfectly describing what you see. All right, and we don't want to forget that we need to assess for the other things we look for in EEG. You don't want to just stare at that abnormal region and ignore everything else. So we want to make sure we're not missing any epileptiform abnormalities or asymmetries in other areas. It's pretty easy to get your eye drawn to that side, though. I mean, this is a really nice example of focal slowing. Look at those delta waves. And there's another one. And it's there is a um, phase reversal here, meaning the waves are pointing at each other. However, that's not epileptiform. That morphology does not look like an epileptiform um, spike or sharp wave. Everything that points at each other is not epileptiform. So every phase reversal is not epileptiform, and that is an error that beginners often make. So you shouldn't just be looking at every wave that points at each other, because a lot of waves point at each other. Here's another nice delta wave here. It seems like that mid-posterior temporal region is the most significant in terms of the slowing. Okay, as we go on here, we want to think about um, other features. So have we seen any drowsiness yet? Not really, actually. This patient looks pretty awake. We've seen this awake background the whole time. We haven't really seen any signs of drowsiness, and we haven't seen any sleep architecture yet. So we'll keep our eyes out for that. We're seeing a lot of EMG artifact here on the right side. Maybe she's clenching her jaw over there. The tech should notice that and tell the patient to open their mouth or relax their jaw. Again, more focal slowing here as we keep going. And still no sleep. It looks like the technician did do the hyperventilation, but there was no response. Oh, and I was just going to mention, we'll see if there's photic, but it says no photic on machine. So I guess the patient is not going to be able to get her photic stimulation, which really probably doesn't matter as we're not really worried about generalized epilepsy in this patient with a focal tumor. All right, so her eyes open here and we see attenuation here. All right, so our conclusion here is the first thing, is this normal or abnormal? And I think we would all agree that it's abnormal. And then you want to itemize out the abnormalities. So this is an abnormal EEG due to the presence of number one, focal slowing in the left anterior quadrant, number two, breach rhythm over the left temporal region. So those are your abnormalities. And then you want to say what the clinical significance is. These findings are consistent with, number one, focal slowing is consistent with focal subcortical dysfunction. It's a white matter, it's a sign of white matter pathology. That may be a little bit too much detail for an EEG report. Sometimes I do write, this is consistent with focal subcortical dysfunction, but you can also just say focal structural dysfunction in this region or focal cerebral dysfunction in this region. Um, either, you know, any of those are fine. And then number two, breach rhythm is consistent with skull defect in this area. You always want to say no epileptiform activity and no electrographic seizures were seen. And that's it.